Hello friends, welcome back to the channel and a huge thank you to all of you for continuing to support us on this little corner of the internet. As you can probably see, it's a really fine day today. So I've come outside and I'm going to take the opportunity to do a little bit of work on the roses before winter sets in. I hope you're enjoying the knit along so far. And this week we're going to continue with our Claire jumper by creating the front. And I'm also going to show you how to create jumpers for your four-legged friends, just like the one that Luna's wearing here. Hello. Yes. Good girl. So let's get some knitting, some creating and some pruning done. Hello. Make you some new jumpers. Gonna have a bigger wardrobe than mummy, aren't you? Yes, you oh. are. Pruning your roses for the winter season can be somewhat terrifying, especially since gardening experts and rose experts like the incredible David Austin do suggest that you prune back quite severely and take off most of the foliage, which means that your rose bush can end up looking like little more than a twig. But do not lose faith, my friends. Just like a new spring season will be here next year, your roses will also burst back into bloom in the next season. Have a little faith. To learn all about the stitches used in this knit along, be sure to check out my shorts here on the channel, where I go through all the stitches that we need to make our Claire jumper. I've knit the first part of this jumper using a few different yarns while preparing for this knit along, because a lot of vintage yarns that are listed on vintage patterns don't exist anymore. Here is the back of the pattern knit up in navy, aran or worsted weight. And here it is in the DK weight in the lovely light blue I'm creating on the channel. I also knit up the piece using a lighter fingerling type weight which ended up too small and has since been frocked. The aran or worsted weight also ended up too big in terms of the scale that the pattern suggests. Yes, I work hard for you guys. Although there are many conversion charts out there attempting to convert all those sadly unavailable yarns, I found that having a good knit up in a variety of weights is the best way to help you determine which yarn is best to use for a project. Remember too that we all knit with different tension, so it may differ for you. For me, the DK weight was the best weight to use on this occasion and it gave me the scale and size that the pattern gives. To begin the front of your Claire jumper, begin as we did for the back by casting on 100 stitches with the 2.75mm needles and knitting in 2x2 two two ribbing for 4.5 inches like I have here. The pattern then wants us to increase the number of stitches evenly across the row, this time to 134. Again, I'm doing so using a make one increase, picking up the horizontal bar between the stitches onto the left hand needle and knitting it to create a new stitch. Now that those increases are complete, the pattern wants us to change to the larger 3.25mm needles and knit in stockingette, repeating one row knit, one row purl until the piece measures 11.5 inches or the length you need to reach from your waist to your underarm. Now I've knit that stockingette. The next thing to do is to grease seven stitches at the beginning of the next two rows. Decrease by knitting two stitches and then pulling the first stitch over the second to decrease it like so. 
Repeat this process seven times to decrease by seven stitches. After those two decrease by seven rows, we now decrease by one stitch at every end on every other row and the pattern asks us to do this eight times in total. So now that I've completed those decrease rows, you can see that I've created the front arm side. And now the pattern wants us to continue knitting in stockingette for four and a half inches from the first decreases that we made. After knitting those four and a half inches, it's now time to create that beautiful ribbed neckline. And to do that on the front, we need to stitch the first 27 stitches in stockinette, then the next 50 stitches in 2x2 two two rib to create that neckline, then the last 27 stitches in stockinette, and we do this for two and a half inches. Now that that ribbed neckline is knit, all we need to do to finish the front of our Claire jumper is bind off. So let's make some attire for our best friends then, shall we? To begin, we need to measure our model. Take all these measurements with an inch or two of ease to ensure that your pooch is comfy. Firstly, for the length of the jumper, measure from where their collar would begin to just before their back legs begin. Also noting at the same time where their front legs begin. For the width measurements, carefully measure around your friend's neck, being careful not to measure too tightly. Then measure their widest central measurement. For loons, this is just after her front legs. And then measure around the end of their rib cage like so. Now for the armholes. Measure the distance between the front paws and then measure around the top of the front leg. And that's all the measurements we need. To draft the pattern, plot your pal's length measurement along the left edge of your pattern paper, also marking their collar to front leg measurement on this line. At the top of the length measurement, plot one quarter of the neck circumference, creating the neckline of your pattern. Out from the collar to front leg mark, Plot one quarter of your friend's widest measurement, creating the upper chest line. At the bottom of the length line, plot one quarter of the lower rib cage measurement. Now join all these points to draft the body of your dog's jumper, adding a fold mark along the left hand edge. Now for the armholes. Plot half of the between front legs measurements out from the collar to front leg mark. Then plot their leg circumference to the right of this mark and downwards, below the collar to front leg mark like so. To do this, I made a circle with my tape measure, holding it together at the leg circumference measurement before drawing around it, keeping it nice and simple like. Finally, add a seam allowance around the pattern and that is it finished.
For fabric, be sure to use something soft with some stretch so that your friend is nice and comfy in your creation. Cut out two of the pattern on the fold, cutting out the armholes on one of these pieces. When sewing with a stretch or knit fabrics, arm your machine with a stretch, a jersey or a ballpoint needle and sew using a zigzag or stretch stitch on your machine. This will make sewing with stretch fabrics an absolute breeze and will avoid any skipped stitches. Now simply sew up the side seams to create your friend's jumper. I used scuba fabric, so I don't even need to worry about hemming. Lovely and easy. If you want to add a little pizzazz to your jumper, you can use the collar and front leg circumference measurements to create a little turtleneck and arm cuffs. Add an inch to these measurements for seam allowance and cut pieces of fabric that measure these measurements in length and are approximately three inches wide. Sew the pieces together along the shorter ends to create little circles. Now fold them over on themselves wrong sides together to create neat little fabric rings which can now be stitched onto the jumper at the neckline and armholes. And there we are, easy and cute doggy couture. Can you sit? Good girl, well done. Well, there you go, my friends. Gardening, sewing and knitting all in one week. I hope you've had a great time sewing your very own Claire jumper. And I hope you can see that it's really coming together now. Next week, we'll work on the sleeves and I'll be bringing you a recipe for something really delicious in the colder weather. But until next week, my friends, another biscuit. Stay safe, friends. Bye. Is that good? <laughs>